Hi friends, Cole here. Thanks for joining me. And I am calling a time out. And I wanna help you learn how to call it for yourself as well. So you may think about what you associate with a timeout. My associations are whenever I was in trouble as a kid and I needed to go to the corner to think about what I did to consider something. Um, and I wanna bring back the timeout, but I don't want it to be, I want us to reframe it. And it doesn't need to be when we've done something wrong, anything like that. But we can look at it in terms of where our window of tolerance is. So you may have heard this idea. So each of us have a window of tolerance of things that um, inside this window, things are good, things are easy, we can connect with people, we can communicate our needs and our feelings um, and meet people where they are, whether we're at work and in our family. And at the borders, at the edges of this window is when things start to get a little, things start to get a little tricky and hairy. Um, so we can have a hyper arousal. This is when we're getting really agitated and you're like, oh my gosh, if they do this one more time or uh, enter your own here, you're, you can kind of feel the blood boil. I can kind of, I can feel it as I'm even talking about it. The irritation, the kind of shoulders up by the ears, the little bit of shaking, that sensation. At the other end of the window of tolerance is this hypo arousal. And that's when we're like, checking out. We're beginning to like, you can hear, you can see their lips moving, but you can't make out the words type thing. Checking out. All of a sudden I have a zillion things to do, but I can't keep my eyes open. Um, hypo arousal. So going down to the bottom. So what we can do is we can begin to notice where our borders are, where our edges are. And once that comes up to allow that noticing of that, to be a, a marker for some self-care, some self-soothing. What do I need to do here? Because those markers, you know, that noticing lets us know that we need to do some adaptive behavior to stay within this window of tolerance, this connection. So these are just some, some things that we can do, some movements that we can um, incorporate, some breath that we can incorporate in order to bring ourselves back into this window of balance, however kind of you want to look at it. And another thing to note is that everybody's window is different and it also shifts and it's going to be, you know, a little shaky, there's no hard and fast rules, but the more that we begin to notice the sensations in our body, to notice that we're getting edgy on one way or the other, then we can, you know, more quickly bring it back home. And that's what this is. This is just a practice, just like, just like anything else that we're just practicing here. So we're going to do just a short practice here to center ourselves. So take a seat. You can sit on a chair. You can sit on the ground. I'm sitting up on a bolster. And we're just going to get centered with some breath, with some movement and some awareness. Yeah. So close your eyes down. Wherever you are, press down through your sit bones and notice how that allows the spine to grow some. You can reach through the crown of the head. Maybe at the same time as you're reaching through the crown of the head, you can let the shoulders drop just a little bit more and maybe, maybe that shoulder drop let you realize how high they were. Often when we think we're relaxing, we're not. So when we bring our awareness to certain body parts, we're like, oh, okay, I can release a bit more there. But don't worry too much about looking like a meditator or looking a certain way. We're just trying to find space in the body. And really all of these practices are about finding space, whether it be in um, the mind, in the body, in the heart space. We're just looking for some spaciousness. And especially between stimulus and response. This really allows us to respond to life and respond to the present moment rather than just reacting out of habituations and conditionings. It gives us our choice whenever we have space. So a few rounds of breath. Just notice the breath. No need to fix or change or manage. 
you can unburden yourself with doing something a certain way for a moment that may feel refreshing. Just letting your breath breathe itself. Now we'll do a little bit of a different breath here and this will help to activate the parasympathetic by extending the exhale. So we're gonna naturally inhale. You don't have to do anything with your inhale, just naturally inhale. And then extend your exhale longer than the inhale. So extend it out, let it come out the mouth as well. And then maybe at the bottom, pause for a count or two. And then inhale, naturally breathe in. Exhale, bring awareness to it and make it longer than the inhale. Out the mouth. <sighs> Maybe if it feels okay, you pause for a moment or two at the bottom of the breath and then inhale naturally. So continue like this. Maybe you begin to count. You don't have to count. So maybe possibly you have a inhale for three, and exhale for five and pause for one or two or some variation of that. If this doesn't feel comfortable, then you don't need to do it. This is just a suggestion, something to explore. A big part of this practice of yoga in general is learning where to push forward, where to pull back, what serves us and what doesn't. So at any time something doesn't feel good or it doesn't feel supportive, then yeah, just take it out. And once more like this. So natural inhale. Extended open mouth exhale. Hold for a breath or two. And then now come to a natural breath, in and out. Maybe notice any sensation difference, any dropping of the energy possibly. Or maybe not, but just notice if there's any differences just with a few rounds of breath there. And begin to spiral the spine so you can open your eyes if you'd like. And we're just going to get some energy moving into the spine. So take your hands to the knees and you can use that, them to kind of propel you around, kind of push and pull at the knees. And you can make these circles as big as you'd like or as small as you'd like. It's so good to move the spine. Let's move in the other direction. Beautiful and taking some cat cows. So now we're moving the spine in this direction. Inhale, you can pull at the knees, pull the heart forward, open the throat, gazes up. And then exhale, push at the knees as you round your back, pull the belly to the spine, chin to the chest. And a couple more times like this, you can move with your breath or at any pace you'd like to. I really like and encourage you to utilize the hands on the knees of the kind of pushing and pulling here. Inhale when you come forward and exhale as you round. Beautiful and coming to center. And we'll go side to side lateral. If you're in a chair, you can take your hand to the hip as you do this. Otherwise, take your right hand down to, um, so either your hip or down to the ground. And we're going to move laterally. So on an exhale, reach over towards the side. Let the left sit bone ground as the left fingers reach opposite direction. Inhale, lift up and we switch sides. So the right sit bone grounds as the right fingers reach. Inhale, center. And exhale, reach. And again, moving with your breath. Do once more each side. So finding space in the side body. 
maybe audible exhales. And inhale, coming up. Just for a moment, I want you to bring um, fingers to your sternum and just do a little bit of tapping here. Deep breathing, <sighs> sighing out the mouth. Let's do a couple lion's breath as we do this. You can even use both hands. So a lion's breath is when we're gonna, <sighs> we're gonna stick the tongue out. So inhale, lion's breath. <sighs> All along the sternum, inhale. <sighs> Once more, inhale. And release the hands down. And just take a moment and notice any sensations. Beautiful. And slowly open your eyes. This is a stimulation of the vagus nerve, which the breath is doing as well, but the top of the nerve which goes all throughout the body, uh, start, starts around the throat and the sternum. So that vibration, same as audible exhales, um, that hits the vibration that stimulates that, which is our chill reflex, our soothe and settle reflex. So any type of humming, singing, vibration here, um, or the tapping is really good when you need to chill out for just a bit. Let's go ahead and stand up. So if you're in a chair, go ahead and stand up. And, um, we're gonna take a forward fold. So here's an option if you, you wanna hold on to a chair here. You can also take a block if you need a little bit more support. We're not trying to get a giant stretch, but we're just trying to get, find some space. You can also take hands to a block. Inhale, halfway lift. So we're gonna kind of straighten or lengthen the spine. So the tailbone's in one direction, the crown of the head is in one direction. We're not reaching forward, but we got some length in the back. And then exhale, fold down. So if your hands on the, are on a chair, the kind of fold will look more like this. Inhale, lift. And exhale, fold. You can also be coming all the way down. Again, inhale, lift. And exhale, fold. All right, we're going to roll up. And it's, we're going to roll up and it might be a little weird. I'm going to turn this way. Well, I'll turn this way so you can see. But we'll do some shaking here. So the shaking has the same, um, kind of the same concept. Not only is it stimulating um, through that vibration, but it's also hitting all the fascia in the body. If you don't know what the fascia is, it's like this 3D spider web that encases all of our muscles. And when we get adhesed one place, we get adhesed other place. It kind of pulls on each other. So the shaking can be really good for this. Bend the knees really deep so the belly is on the thighs. And we're going to push down through the feet. So don't think so much about lifting up, but push down through the feet so much. Begin to vibrate. Begin to shake. Yes, it feels weird. The arms can just hang down. Now, maybe you kind of bring, sway the arms over to the right. Possibly you feel like a pulling somewhere. That would be kind of where adhesion would be in the fascia. And swing over to the other side. So just kind of exploring. And then maybe you come up a little bit and do the same. So where you feel the tightness, maybe you stay right there and have a little shake. Remember, I'm doing this on camera. <laughs> no one's probably seeing you. And just kind of move around to where you can feel some of that release. And we'll slowly come all the way up. And when you come all the way up, you can continue the shake. And let's go ahead and get the arms and the hands involved. And roll the shoulders as you shake. Maybe even a little bit quicker. And begin to exhale, lion's breath with the tongue out. Inhale. And once more, shake, 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 inhale. And come to stillness. Maybe place the hands on the belly and notice any sensation in the body. Notice the feelings and any energy shift.
beautiful. We'll begin to spread and separate the feet. Take the right toes towards the front of the room and we're gonna go into warrior two. So the arms can be out, the feet, the ankles are about underneath the wrists. That's a very um, rough um, estimate there. Bend into the front leg. Both weight is going evenly into both feet here. We're just gonna move with breath. So inhale, push and lift. Exhale down. Inhale, push and lift. Exhale down once more. Inhale up. And exhale, we're gonna turn all the right toes forward. And actually we're gonna bring them, whoa! <laughs> bring them both out, heels in, and bend the knees down. So the movement with the breath can kind of find this cadence in the body, which is really soothing and settling. So it's one reason why vinyasa can feel so like dancey and fluid at sometimes, is that breath with movement, it's kind of like uh, we're adding, we're decorating the breath with movement, which reminds us to stay with the cadence of the breath. So we'll do it again here. Inhale will be center, hands on the knees. Exhale, bend the elbows and drop the right shoulder down. You can sink the hips. Inhale, center, and exhale, drop the left shoulder. Oof, it feels good. Center, inhale, and exhale, right. Inhale, center, exhale, left. And then inhale, come back up, press into both feet, and we'll take warrior two towards the back. So we'll shift the feet just a little bit. Again, arms out, elbows, or not elbows, wrist about above the ankles, and we'll sink in. Not worrying too much about alignment here, we're just really wanting to bring that breath to movement and find that, um, that kind of soothing feeling. Inhale, lift the arms up, straighten the front leg, and exhale, warrior two. Inhale. And exhale out the mouth. Once more, inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Turn the left toes in. This time the heels will be out, the toes will be in just slightly. Take the hands to the hips, bend the knees just slightly. And then inhale, let the heart shine up, let the eyes look up just slightly and then we'll begin to hinge at the hips as we fold forward. So engage the belly here, and then the hands can come down to the ground. Wide leg forward fold. So I invite you to bring in any movement here that you'd like. You can bend one knee and then the other. Some people like to stay still. I'm more of a wiggler. And kind of pouring out as if you could just release whatever it is that had a hold on you prior just pouring it all out. And then inhale, halfway lift, press the ground away so you have a little bit of space. And then heel toe, heel toe, heel toe, the feet back together. Inhale, halfway lift, maybe hands to shins, the chair, the block. Exhale, pour out, twice more like this. Inhale, halfway lift, hands to shins, chair, block, or floor. Exhale, fold. Once more, inhale, halfway. And exhale, release. And we're gonna find a seat again. So whether that is on the floor or in a chair, it's gonna take a few more rounds of breath just to settle in. So, Finding the space in the body, pressing down through the sit bones, lifting up through the crown of the head and imagining you can create more space in the torso. Maybe there's a bit more space between the ribs and the hips. Maybe you have a bit more mental space. It's quite amazing how just a little bit of shift in the body, a few somatic um, exercises, some shaking, some moving with breath, some awareness can shift the energy in the body and it really doesn't take that much to shift. 
So about three more rounds of breath. We'll breathe in naturally. Exhale out for just a bit longer and then hold if it feels okay at the bottom for a breath or two. Same as we did in the beginning. So inhale naturally. Exhale longer and audibly. Maybe hold. And inhale. Exhale longer and audibly. Maybe hold. And inhale last time. Exhale longer and audibly. Maybe hold. And inhale naturally. And back to a normal, unmanaged breath. We're going to take one hand to the heart. And if you're seated, take one hand to the ground. Just a little symbol, just a little mudra of a grounded heart here. And coming down from the head and the mental, the mental chatter and the mental stress and how we can get really wound up. Just a reminder to ground in. We can anchor in through the breath, through movement. And we can always give ourselves a little time out and come back. Give ourselves some space. And you can open your eyes whenever you're ready. Thank you all so much for joining me. I hope that uh, some of these helped. And feel free to take what works and to leave the rest. And I hope that you enjoyed this little time out. Maybe next time back with me, we'll have nap time. Um, <laughs> but really, we need to bring these back. And yeah, absolutely. I'm going to start calling time out and nap time on myself um, more often. And maybe you should too. So again, my, Cole, my name is Cole Chance. And thank you for letting me be part of your practice. If you want to learn more about me, colechanceyoga.com. I have um, yoga teacher trainings coming up. Uh, retreats and lots of classes online, longer hour long classes on my membership site, Om Yoga Tribe. You'll find all that info if you'd like to on the website. Otherwise, I'll see you next time here on your mat.